Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today we're going to be doing a Hearts of Iron 4 tier list on German generals. So let's get into it. I'm really excited about this video. I just saw this on the Tier Maker website. And uh, you know me, I, I love playing Germany. And uh, I love the historical flavor of all the different generals that you have available as that country. So let's rank our first general here, Sepp Dietrich. And Sepp Dietrich has decent attack and supply stats. And those are the two stats that I look at when I'm choosing a general to use as Germany is attack and supply. Attack first, supply second. Uh, you want the divisions under this general to be able to attack well, but if you don't have supply, the combat effectiveness of your divisions is not going to be that high at all. So you want to make sure that you have those two stats in the generals that you choose. Uh, another caveat about this list, there are some field marshals in the list and there are some generals that you will grow to be a field marshal. Uh, so I'll explain that as we go into the different uh, German leaders here. And... Um, I'm not going to review all the leaders, but we're going to do at least half of them. So Sepp Dietrich, decent stats, nothing else really of note other than the fact that he has armor officer, which means we can grow him into panzer leader eventually. So if I need another panzer army, um, I'm definitely going to use him. And I'm going to put him at rank B because he is not one of my top five generals that I would use. And I would use him as a general, but he would be, uh, I think, general number six for sure. So we're going to put him at B. If I need a second Panzer army, which I typically don't, he's it because I'm going to grow him into Panzer leader. OK, the next uh, German general is going to be Heinz Guderian and Guderian is S tier. Guderian is one of the best leaders in the game because because turn one, he comes out of the box with Panzer leader armored division speed 5% armored division attack 10%. These are huge stats. And if this is available turn one um, with on a nation that is going to benefit from building tanks, uh, you definitely want Guderian and you definitely want Guderian over your uh, Panzer army, as it were. So S tier, uh, you're going to use him in almost every single Germany build, unless you're going like uh, infantry only, which can work as Germany, but is not as fun in my opinion. Uh, okay, moving on, we've got Hell. And I would rank him as C. He doesn't really pop out as having excellent stats. He does have the winter specialist stat, I believe. And uh, that's going to give you winter attrition, negative 50% handy for sure. But he's probably looking like uh, general number 10 or 11 in my rankings. Uh, never really use him, never really find the occasion to use him. But if you're going to use... If you're going to have a massive army, yeah, you could definitely use him, but he'd be way down on the list. All right, Albert Kesselring. Uh, decent stats. Could be promoted to a field marshal. Has decent supply, if I remember correctly. But definitely not one of my top eight generals. So I'm going to put him down as C. He's probably like a 9 or a 10 ranked general. I'd probably rank him above hell. But um, he's definitely not going to be like one of the top generals. Um, nothing going on with his traits or anything like that that pops out. All right. The next general is going to be Heinrici, and he does have a few things about his traits uh, that are beneficial. He has decent stats, but namely he he comes with the infantry officer trait which is going to give you 100 percent xp gain for infantry leader and uh that's going to enable him to grow into the infantry later labor uh infantry leader stat faster which gives you a bonus infantry division defense of 15 percent 
So I really like Heinrici for that reason. I also believe he comes with the engineer trait, which is going to give your divisions a river attack 5% and a fort attack 10%. Um, so that is uh, pretty handy as well. For that reason, Heinrici is typically a general number seven for me. Um, moving along here, we've got Von Weish. Von Weish comes out of the box with decent attack and supply traits and he has infantry officer personality trait right out of the box he is a three or four general for me so i'm going to rank him as a he gets to gain the let's see here the infantry leader stat very quickly and uh, for that reason, I'm going to put him as the, the A rank. So for whatever reason, when I use him, he gains the infantry leader stat first whenever he's one of my generals as Germany. I don't know why. It's probably because of his excellent stats, namely his supply stat. Um, but he performs really well in combat. So A ranked, A ranked top five general for sure all right our next german leader here is going to be von kluge and really i go back to him as being the top field marshal and i would rank him as the top field marshal turn one because of the fact that he turns on tanks and um the offensive doctrine stat is the one that he gets right off the bat, the bat. And this turns on tanks because organization loss when moving is negative 30%. So that means I can take a tile and keep my green uh, stat bar high. That's the organization stat as on the move. So when my, ta when my tanks are moving, taking out divisions, pushing forward, they keep high organization so they can keep the attack up and uh, von kluge definitely has that going for him and he's got decent stats to back that up as well i say he's uh, the best turn one field marshal because there's another german leader here that you can promote into field marshal that would be better than von kluge but turn one uh best field marshal uh, definitely using him almost every Germany playthrough that that you'll see me do. So tier list A for sure. Rank A. OK, the next German leader, General more specifically, is going to be Von Bock. And Von Bock has really good attack stats, um, decent supply, but Really good attack, but I'm kind of split on him because his combat performance um, early is going to be good. But he has the harsh leader personality trait, which, in my opinion, kind of balances out. So it gives you plus one attack stats, but gives you negative 10 division recovery trait. So initially, he's going to attack well on your opening move. But then because his division recovery is hampered, he's not going to be able to keep up the attack. So if you need a good like opening move, like he's definitely a good general, you may consider using him. But he does come with the downside of the negative 10 division recovery. And I do believe that his supply stat is not that great either. So if you just need a quick knockout blow, he's your man. I would say definitely a top 10 general. That's why I'll, that's why I'll rank him as B. But definitely not a top five for me because of the harsh leader stat. Okay, the next general that we'll be ranking is Von Kukler. Uh, Kukler has excellent supply, and supply is so impactful with the No Step DLC that I'm going to rank him uh, top tier A. So he's going to be my fifth general that I would choose, and it's solely based on the fact that supply... Uh, really will hamper your your offensive capabilities and he will keep the supply high 
So he's going to be incredibly useful in Barbarossa where your supply lines are stretched and um, you're not going to see as many red jerry cans because you use this general. Uh, so purely for that reason, um, he's he's rank A. I would use him more often than not in almost all of my uh, Germany playthroughs. All right. The next leader here is going to be Ritter von Lieb. And to me, his stats aren't that great. He's probably like not top 10, but all around he'd be okay as an infantry general. We're just going to keep him at rank C. I do think that like he's it's debatable whether you want to use any of these three. I guess there could be uses for Kessel Ring, Hell or Lieb, depending on a like how you're deploying them, but definitely like maybe eight, nine or 10. Uh, any of these generals could work. So I'm going to put him as C. I don't typically use um, eight, nine or 10 armies. So that's kind of why they're rank C as well. Um, but yeah, definitely usable, but down there on the tier list. All right, our next leader is going to be Von Runsted, and he's decent. He's a field marshal, and um, if you're going to be doing a lot of attacks in cities, he has Urban Assault Specialist, which gives you urban movement 5%, attack 10%, and defense 10%. Really cool stats if you want to make like specialized armies and then have him as your field marshal and then he could perhaps like defend or be like this incredible specialist that you could could utilize him as to just do urban assault. But I think that's where he would typically shine on like maybe a um, a fallback line order and you could set him up on ports or something like that but ports that that also incorporate cities on the defensive um but definitely more of like a specialist he has decent stats and you could definitely use him over kluge if you're going infantry only that could be a strategy so i'm going to rank him as b uh usable depending on your overall strategy but i don't typically use him uh so rank of b okay our next general is going to be a, like a top three generals just because his stats are so good um so he's going to be an a-lister and that's going to be rommel uh rommel doesn't particularly get the infantry leader stat quickly but he will grind it out uh, but overall like out of the box really good stats and going to perform better than any of the B or C list generals. So I use him every playthrough as an infantry leader, and he's great. Uh, definitely use him if you're going to use five armies. Okay, our next general can be used in many different roles. And out of the box, you can give him the engineer trait, which is the river attack 5%, fort attack 10%. The river attack is going to be more of, is going to be better, in my opinion, than the fort attack, because the fort attack is more situational. Um, he also comes out of the box with uh, Trickster, I believe. And that's going to be Von Manstein. And Von Manstein, you can upgrade him to be a field marshal and this engineer stat is going to account for half uh, if you employ him as a field marshal but you're still going to get to uh, 2.5 percent river attack for all of your armies and he does have good attack and supply stats which will also trickle down to uh, your armies as well so you can grow him into a field marshal you can use him as a general he's good in both of those roles he's uh, excellent as just a a infantry general i'm gonna rank him as s tier because you're gonna use him every single time um and with with a lot of upside if you grow him into a field marshal so s tier for sure. You're going to be using him every time you play Germany. Um, just a great overall general. All right. The next 
leader is going to be a field marshal, and that's going to be Modell. Modell is better on the defensive, and um, since he is a field marshal, if you are fighting a defensive war, or say you have a defensive army group, I would definitely consider using him, but it is situational and it depends on your overall strategy. I don't use him as Germany, but you may use him if you're doing um, like an NSIG campaign or something like that. He would be useful as a defensive field marshal. So I'm going to rank him as B, um, decent stats, uh, but he really gets turned on on the defensive. Um, so definitely not an A or an S where you use him every single time as Germany, but a solid B. All right. The next German general is going to be von Weish. And von Weish is an interesting one. He has decent attack and supply stats. So definitely a rank A. I use him as a four slotted uh, general. So I use him as probably my fourth choice as general, mainly because of his supply. But he also comes with cavalry officer um, right out of the bat. So you could promote him into cavalry leader, which gives cavalry attack 15 percent, motorized attack 15 percent and mechanized attack 15 percent. So depending on if you're using any of those three division types, he has great potential uh, to grow him into um, any of those, the, the cavalry leader. Um, so you could give him motorized divisions or mechanized or cavalry divisions, and he would perform quite well. But uh, he would he performs well anyways. Just if you just give him infantry, he performs incredibly well. So I use him every single time as Germany. So solid A ranking there. All right. Our next general has excellent supply stats and is more of like a paratrooper general. Um, gosh, now I'm now his name is escaping me, um, but he's going to be a solid B. Let me look him up over here. Kurt Student. So he starts with Reckless and Commando traits. So the Commando trait is going to give you out of supply negative 25%. Uh, so this could be useful if you're surrounded, uh, but it also buffs him in terms of supply. Um, the Reckless trait, I believe see here it gives him more of a chance of getting wounded in attack which makes his overall stats uh negative 50 percent so that's a huge downside so reckless 20 percent planning speed but plus 50 percent chance of getting wounded and if your generals are getting wounded a lot they're really not going to perform as well um so Definitely more of like a paratrooper general. If you're going to use that, I would definitely use him uh, because of his excellent supply traits of commando. Uh, but otherwise, I don't use him every time uh, as a standard like line infantry general. So I would say a B ranking because of his specialist traits. OK, the final general that we're going to be putting him into this tier list is going to be Paulus. Paulus does not have good stats. He doesn't have a lot going for him. So it wouldn't really be a tier list unless we had a D ranking. Uh, so Paulus is going to be a D rank. I would not use him in any case. And uh, you could probably throw all of the other generals in this tier list in D ranking just because I'm probably not going to use them. Montoyful is okay. Uh, this is that Kruger is okay. If you want three or four uh, 
like tank armies as Germany, uh, but the rest of these I don't even consider uh, because they're really humdrum and I'm not gonna make like 12, 13 or 14 armies, uh, but you could probably just pause the video here. Uh, this is how I would build out my armies using um, the, the top uh, German leaders here going to the bottom. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my tier list, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do, please like and subscribe. We got Patreon, we got channel membership on YouTube, which will unlock uh, certain perks for you uh, in certain videos that you can have access to, as well as emojis when I live stream. So check that out, and I'll see you on the next one.